macrotic solvent. So these three terms for solvents that we frequently use in organic chemistry. Fine. So we will discuss in detail. So first of all the question what is basically a solvent? So a solvent is a liquid that serves as a medium for a reaction. So in reaction the starting materials that we are using substrate, reagent, everything that will be present in the medium and that medium is the liquid medium and that we call solvent. Now there is basically two different roles. It is true that the main role is as medium but there can be another role also. So if it is not participating directly, suppose it is only acting as a medium, there is no direct participation. So in that case we have this category. So here the main role is to dissolve the reactants or starting materials and here we keep this statement in mind that like dissolves like. That means if there is polar reactants we are using such as ions are involved. So in that case polar solvents will be best because they will be easily soluble in polar solvent. Similarly, if the reactants, their nature is non-polar such as hydrocarbon, compounds of carbon and hydrogen, then we have to mainly focus on non-polar solvents. But there is another category also, though it is not so common like this category, but we also have to know and that category is participating directly. Now to understand this category in detail, basically we have to know this polar protic solvent. There are total basically three terms. Among these three terms, one of these is polar protic solvent. Now this category is mainly applicable for polar protic solvent. So here what it does, apart from dissolving reactants, that is obviously the first rule. But apart from that, it can also act as a source of proton or it can also remove a proton. That means it is acting as acid, it is showing some acidic behavior or basic behavior or it can donate a lone pair of electrons. So these are some of the extra roles that it can play. But it is only applicable for polar protic solvent. Now once we finish this discussion about all these three types, then it will be clear to you that how it is only applicable for polar protic solvent. Okay. Now how to recognize polar and non-polar? That is the first classification we have to do. Then under polar there are uh, two more types. But first, um, once we know what is solvent, the next question is what is polar, what is non-polar and how we will understand that uh, which one is polar, which one is non-polar. So polar solvents, they will contain bonds between two atoms where charge separation is possible. So suppose we have bond between A and B, if there is some electronegativity difference, then only there will be some charge separation. Suppose A is more electronegative, so there will be del negative charge, it will be del positive charge but if their electronegativity value is very close or suppose it is same uh, bond that is CC bond or CH bond then there will be no such charge separation and in that case we will call them non-polar solvents. Now how to recognize it basically from dielectric constant value and dipole moment value uh, there is a database for every solvent we will be able to understand because if these two are high mostly it will be polar. There's direct relationship with dipole moment and dielectric constant. But apart from this database, is there any simple way by which we can understand which one is polar, which one is non-polar? There is a simple way and mostly it will work. In most of the cases, it will work. Just check the miscibility with water. So if it is miscible with water, then it will be polar. It will be considered as polar. But if it is not, then it will be non-polar. Though there are some exceptions may be there but it, is, it mostly works. So here we have some examples of solvents that we that are very common in organic uh, reactions. Now among these solvents as you can see here we have pentane that means we have only carbon hydrogen bond. In case of toluene also we have carbon hydrogen bond. In chloroform it is true we have carbon chlorine bond also. Then here we have carbon oxygen bond. Now there may be some confusion that uh, carbon oxygen bond is present so it should be polar, we should consider it polar or non-polar. So what we will do, we will just check the miscibility. For this type of uh, solvent, it is easy to understand that yes, there is electronegativity difference. And uh, But for this type of solvents, there may be some confusion for ch 3 cn also. Because there is carbon-nitrogen bond, so whether we should consider it polar or non-polar. Now after checking miscibility with water, if you see, these solvents in uh, green color 
which is for non-polar solvent, they are actually not miscible with water. So we can consider them as under non-polar solvent. But the remaining ones, they are actually miscible with water. So that is why we can consider them under the category of polar solvent. So this is a simple way. If we do not know dielectric constant dipole moment value, if that is not at our hand, then by checking miscibility, we will be able to understand. Now, once we know what is polar, what is non-polar, now the next question arises, under polar, there is two types. One is polar protic, another one is polar aprotic. But when you go to non-polar, basically there is no such thing as non-polar protic. Because when it is non-polar, it is always uh, aprotic because there is no active hydrogen present. Uh, once we see the detailed definition of this uh, difference between these two, it will be clear to you why there is no such further division under non-polar solvents. So that is why there are total three types. Under polar, there are polar protein, polar aprotic, and non-polar, there is no such further division. So polar protic, in this case, there will be at least one hydrogen atom connected directly to electron negative atom, that is OH bond or nitrogen hydrogen bond. Now because of this type of bond, they can participate in hydrogen bonding. And these type of uh, bonds, they can also serve as a source of proton because these hydrogens, as it is directly attached to a highly electronegative atom, it will be active hydrogen. But what about polar aprotic? Obviously, this is the reverse definition. There will be no hydrogen atom connected directly to any electronegative atom and they will not participate in hydrogen bonding. Now, when we talk about non-polar solvent, there is basically, we are considering bonds such as A and B where electronegativity of these two atoms are very close. So there is no such polarity and when the question of polarity doesn't arise, then further division is not possible. That is polar protic or polar aprotic. So there is no such thing as polar protic. It is always aprotic. Fine. So if you have carbon hydrogen bond, this hydrogen, it is not a polar protic. It is polar aprotic type. So there is no such further division. Now we will focus on this, uh, see some examples with dipole moment value and also dielectric constant value but before that here you can see uh, several solvents together and three categor categories are there so for non-polar solvent as uh, we can check miscibility with water and we can decide which one will be under this category so here these five solvents among all these they are not soluble with water so they are under non-polar category now, when there is polar protic and polar aprotic, we just have to check whether there is any hydrogen atom present directly attached to OH or any. So, it is present here. See, so it will be under polar protic. Then we have NH bond. Again, we have OH bond, OH bond. So, these four obviously it will be polar protic and rest of the solvents that will be under polar aprotic. Fine. Now, here we have the first list. So this list is for non-polar solvents. So here as you can see dielectric constant value they are most, mostly less than 5. And here it is uh, dipole moment it is 0 and for this also it is even less than 2. Now this type of solvents uh, one example I can give that is Grignard reagent uh, when we prepare we use diethyl ether solvents. Here basically this lone pair over oxygen it helps to uh, stabilize this magnesium 2 plus R. Then another example we can use is Rx in presence of lithium and hexane or pentane this type of solvent. Basically two equivalents of lithium there will be formation of RLI. So from Rx that is RCl, RBr there will be RLI and another LIX. So for this type of reactions non-polar solvents are used. Okay. Polar aprotic solvents. So polar aprotic solvents, here we have two, uh, I have made two different lists. Now the first list that you are seeing here, here dielectric constant values, they are, if you compare with the previous uh, dielectric constant list, that is I am talking about non-polar solvent, you will see they are moderately high. So even it is uh, less than 10 for all these solvents. Now these solvents are uh, in general, they are very, most general reactions, they are very good solvent, polar aprotic solvent where uh, the active hydrogen like OH NH, these type of hydrogens are not required. In those cases, they are very good solvent. And dipole moment value, that is also not very high, not very, uh, it is not close to zero. That is, it is greater than one. 
so it is not very high or very so this is one type of polar aprotic solvent there is another type of uh, polar aprotic solvent now in this case see dielectric constant values compared to the previous one and also compared to non polar solvent is very very high so it is greater than 20 now this type of solvents that is where this type of situation arises suppose you need some polar solvent but there should not be any active hydrogen present it should be polar aprotic that is polar aprotic but the polarity should be very high so that it can dissolve some ions that is ions are present it can dissolve some ions but still the ions should be free because it is aprotic solvent they will not make any hydrogen bond with the reagent so very good example is SN2 reaction where these type of solvents are used the nucleophile that is uh, present in SN2 reaction this should be very free now free condition is possible only if the solvents are not making a uh, hydrogen bond so that is why aprotic solvent is required but as nucleophiles they are carrying charge so polar solvent is also very uh, that is another requirement so both the requirement are fulfilled so that is why this type of solvents where dielectric constants are very high not just polar aprotic high dielectric constant value so they are very good for SN2 reaction and now the last one is polar protic solvent now for polar protic solvent mostly we will see water is obviously there mostly we will see under this category we have different types of alcohol we also have acetic acid so here we have tertiary butanol ethanol then methanol ammonia now these type of solvents as remember the first slide that I have shown they are very uh, they will be required in those cases where apart from playing the role of medium for the solvent they can also uh, be can be a source of H plus okay or they can remove that is they can help in the removal of H plus now one example I can see where directly participation is occurring suppose we are uh, we have taken alkene bromine and uh, water is solvent here which is polar protein now in this case the reaction that is one OH is attached to this CC double bond now the double bond is no longer present so OH and BR that is the net addition to this after breaking of this pi bond that means this OH is coming from water so here water is not only the solvent but it is also directly taking part in the reaction okay now those reactions where the corresponding uh, conjugate bases are used corresponding conjugate bases i mean to say suppose ammonia the corresponding conjugate base will be nh2 minus suppose in some reactions you are using this type of reagent that is amide is present so in that reaction we can use ammonia as solvent suppose another example is ethanol if you remove this h it will be eto minus so if in any reaction we are using eto minus as the base in that solvent etoh can be used okay so these are the another type of reactions where polar protic solvents are used where the conjugate bases are involved so here apart from playing the role of medium they can also directly take part in reaction so here i have uh, again i am showing this first slide where i have mentioned this term that is this is mainly applicable in case of polar protic solvent where there is direct participation so now uh, as we we have complete idea of what is polar protic solvent now you can understand that why it is applicable only for polar protic solvents okay so i hope now you have clear idea about these three types of solvent you also know the basic difference between these three type of solvents and also how to recognize the solvents uh, we have everything clear okay so that's all about this video thank you for listening i will meet you in the next video